Hi, and welcome to LOS 400 Senior Seminar. And this is the first week of the course, and I will be going over the introductory chapter, chapter one and chapter two in a short, hopefully entertaining video. I know you will like my mellifluous voice, but I will also show you what you should gather from these first three chapters, especially chapter one and two. So I'll be looking at some of the PowerPoints that come with the book, and I'll uh, tell you these are the main things that you should get from this chapter. So this is the introductory chapter, and it's basically telling you what is global studies. And these are the four basic ideas. I'm not going to read everything to you, but it's in your book. And again, you can look at the chapter, and you can also see what I am stressing for this course. Remember. You are learning about globalization, but you're also getting ready to write a paper that concerns globalization. Globalization is basically the idea that, it's right here, the process by which the political, economic, social, and cultural links between people, corporations, and governments in different states become integrated through cooperation, trade, travel, communications, media, investment, market forces, and technology. Wow, that's a lot. So globalization is also a very controversial issue, especially for people who think locally that globalization takes away my wages, it takes away our jobs, it takes away our benefits. And uh, that's one of the issues that comes with people who are against globalization. But there are other issues with globalization, such as food and the economy and the uh, climate change that affects all of us. We see that when you're in a pandemic or there's a virus going around, it just doesn't stay locally anymore because this, this world is so interconnected. Viruses, both human and through technology, travel very quickly and can cause great damage. And so that's just an example of the negative parts of globalization. So I want you in this semester to understand the various aspects of globalization. So. What's it mean as a world of community of 100 people? This is just a percentage. This is a kind of a, a soft way of showing the percentages of people. And this is in that introductory chapter, in which I think is very important for all of us to understand. So for instance, this first slide shows us, and I will go to the slide uh, to make it bigger. Um, this first slide shows that the gender is 50-50. But ethnicity, there are 60% Asians. Americans at 14%. So when we compare ourselves to the number of people that come from Asia and Africa, that's 75% right there. So out of 100 people, 75 are Asians and Africans. And 25, the remaining 25 are Americans and Europeans. So think about that. Language. Everyone should speak English. Well, 12 pe uh, more people speak Chinese than English and Spanish combined. And 78% speak other languages. And this is going to be a very important one for our group here because most of you are between the ages of, are in this age group of 20, uh, I'm sorry, 26, the median of the age of the community. So I'm just about to get to this age, and later on I will be in this age group here. So I am a baby boomer, if you don't know that by now. Um, so I've uh, seen the world change a little bit in my uh, short lifetime, but this is the median age of the community in the world. Now, literacy, 84% can read and write. Education, you are in a small group of getting a college degree. If you already, and if you're working towards a, a master's or a PhD, it's even smaller. So 10 have no formal education, that's 10. And 12 have no more than a primary education, that's very small. 77% of the people in the world have shelter, 23% do not. 90% have access, and 10% do not. And there's an interesting uh, story that there are people in America that do not have the access to clean water and sanitation. So this is just not in some of the Asian and African communities that we first think of. It also happens in our uh, own country. 40% live under a democracy. 60% live under author. author, author Authoritarian rule. I'll learn how to say that soon. Seventeen produce more than sixty percent of the world, uh, the wealth, and eighty 
20% live on less than $10 a day. Wealthiest 20% consume 86% of the resources. And that's one of the countries, that's Europe and especially in, the, in North America. The poorest 80% consume 14%. Location. This is going to be an also a one. Is if you look at the idyll idyllic world uh, or the past world, especially again in America, location. Most people lived in rural areas, but now 54% live in urban areas. So it's good to know um, these things about the people. Nutrition. 30% have enough to eat, 50 are net malnourished, and 20 undernourished. A average life expectancy is 72. For poor communities, it's 52. And you can see that technology, 35% connected to the internet, 65% are not, which is an amazing number. And even with those who are connected to technology, the lack of Wi-Fi or high-speed internet is also a problem, as can be seen uh, in the Great Divide in this country as well. Religion, 32% are Christians. That does not mean that means a combination of of the Protestant religions and Catholicism and others. There are 16% with no religion, and I can tell you that number is rising. So that's the introductory uh, chapter. I do want to share some other things that you can learn from this book. Um, this book that you have has some uh, a section in there, and you can go to this site. It's on uh, Macmillan McCormick. This is the, the uh, address, and it's in, found in your book. And you have student resources and online library. And it's a very rich resource. So for instance, um, just general resource and global studies to give you an idea as to where to focus your paper. What do you want to solve? What do you want to help solve? What are you going to research? So for instance, this is there are two videos and they're very good by the way. And they're short and they're much more entertaining than the one I'm making right now. So that is something that you should look at. I highly recommend that. And there are some useful websites, and I'll go to a couple of those in, in later in this video. Um, so this video here on, uh, let's see, I'm going to try to find the video that I uh, highlighted in Chapter 1, and I think it's the lead in Chapter 2. So uh, when we get to Chapter 2, I'll uh, tell you about that particular video. We'll look at that one together. So now in Chapter 1, here are the highlights of Chapter 1. History. There's a lot of history in these uh, in this chapter. Uh, you don't have to memorize anything. There's not a test on it. It's just to give you an idea of how we got to where we are today. For instance, prior to the 16th century, those are the 1500s and earlier, it was pre the pre-modern era, few connections, very isolated. Emergence, 16th to 20th century, after just about the Renaissance, and we're getting Europe as a global actor and it's explore, exploring and also enslaving people. We've got to remember that. Uh, this, so in early 16th century, we're talking about the 1500s and that's just after Christopher Columbus came to America. You can have your opinions on what he did to America, whether he discovered it or, or, uh, or uh, ruined it. Um, world War, we had some world wars, as you probably should know that that happened in the 20th century last century from 1914 to 1945 with a sort of a break in between and we still have people who served in World War II who are alive today. Um, there's plenty of information, movies and so on about that. The Cold War, I grew up during the Cold War and this was a time when we had the potential of a nuclear attack from the Soviet Union. We had to learn to duck and cover under our desk thinking that that would protect us from a nuclear explosion. And then now, since 1990, and through technology, through communications, through television, through uh, just think of uh, uh, of whatever social media you use, and uh, and just the, uh, the the growth that has come since 1990 with uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, uh, just just being able to go on the internet and communicate with other people. So since 1990. This is where we with where we are now, and also other other uh, other continents have grown as well, especially Asia and Africa. Um, I guess the slide, and so the current global trends are the uh, uh, decline of the North and emergence of the South. Now, in the book, they call the North uh, where and they describe the North. I'm not a big fan of the way they describe it as North and the poorer countries as South, but the emergence of the 
the more disenfranchised, I would think, is the better word, of the people that are coming in against, uh, like China was uh, disenfranchised. Well, it didn't. It was not part of the global community. It is now, and it's a major player. Politics, security, mobility, technology, culture, environment. You can all look at this. This is going to inform your paper. And so in globalization, and you can read this, uh, there is a, an acronym, BRIC, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, that he uses a lot in the book. I'm not a big fan of that. You can use it if you want. Uh, the, uh, this was not globalization, sorry. Uh, glo localization, the idea that changes can occur at the global level and at the local level simultaneously. And I think that's a, a good term as well, especially when we're talking about natural resources. If we take care of our own backyard, that in essence can take care of the larger global area as well. Uh, these are going to be important for you. And again, I don't have to read all this, but it is in your book. And uh, you can look at this as well. Uh, the pros of globalization, for instance, created new jobs. If you are a little bit uh, aware of NAFTA, that was the North American uh, Free Trade Agreement amongst Mexico, the United States, and, uh, and Canada. And that was a part of the, uh, the Clinton administration. It started by Bush before that. And uh, it was in the wake of that, it was uh, taken apart by the uh, Trump administra administration uh, because of the cons. So people felt that this was happening. It was a drain on workers. Uh, companies went to uh, the other, uh, went to Mexico to build cars, for instance, which drained many of the, uh, the jobs from America. So international peace um, is one of the things that uh, is a pro of it, and that's the con, technology, technological innovation, and it would, it, they're saying it would have happened without the pressure of globalization. So this continues. You can look at this on your own, but this is one of the slides that's important for you to get to know that there are pros and cons to globalization. And the summary um, this is this, this can be traced over several centuries, but it's, it's accelerated the last 150 years. Um, Europe has led the way. There are two wars that change the structure of the global system and also the balance of power. After World War II, for instance, America was the strongest country in the world. Soviet Union also became part of that, and it was a Cold War. And so the end of the Cold War, and that can be around the late eight, 1980s, uh, with the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the, uh, then in, 19, in the 1990s, with the fall of the uh, USSR, um, there became a, more of a globalization thought. And that's the last bullet. It's the dominant theme. So that's chapter one. Let me show you from the resources what you can find from uh, this video. And I'm going to go to the video. This is from 2016, World Population, and I'll just play it through to show you the advantages of this video. So there are over 7 billion people. That's where you guys are, okay? Look at where we are. You have the power. Talk about this, more people live in urban areas than in rural areas. It's the development of large cities. live in Asia. In North America is very small. 4.9% of the world population lives in North America. So that's just an idea that you can get from going on to the site and it gives you these videos. So I highly recommend looking at the videos. They can give you a lot of information.
and other useful websites as well. So finally, in this video, I'm going to look at Chapter 3, Population and Resources. So this video sort of uh, addressed that as well. And uh, let me get to this next slide. Um, so demography is the study of statistics and trends relating to population. Zero population growth, you probably know what that means. Demographic transition, it explains, explains how population numbers change. Uh, to do the social and economic and health care and so on, people move around about. Um, this is population growth. You probably have seen charts like this. So by 2048, they project that the world population will be 9 billion. So that's a little less than 2 billion more than we have right now. Um, that's going to be our world in 2048. When you think about it, it's only 27 years from now. 27 years from now. Um, the population dominance is in Asia, as you saw from the video. So when you're talking about globalization, and you can see it's China, India, the uh, Southeast Asian countries, uh, those are Indonesia. Those are the areas that have more put people uh, than any place else in terms of percentages. Fertility rates. So the fertility rate and population growth. This is uh, another thing that you can see that the fertility rate in Nigeria, for instance, is about 5.5%. So the population growth grows that way as well. In the USA, it's very small. Okay, and you can see that the sun, the fertility rate is almost the same as the population growth rate, meaning that there's no change. So it's very small there as well. And this is Japan is is the least is the smallest as well. So it's it, this African nation of Nigeria, and then we have this Asian nation, Pakistan, India, and Indonesia, and Mexico are the highest highest fertility rates. Um, now, one thing I'd like you to know is that there is enough food to feed the world. The problem is access. There is enough clean water for the world. The problem is access. So this last one is an important one. Mal malnutrition is a mismatch between supply and demand and nutrition, and too little food or consuming too much. So that's the problem that we're seeing uh, in, even in America today. Um, food losses around the world. Production to retailing, and you, that's another part of your book that you should take a look at. It's just to give you an idea of what will interest you for your paper. Is this an issue you want to understand and learn about and then write about? The urban majority, look, these are the, the 10, there are at least 10 million people in Tokyo, Delhi, Shanghai, Mexico City, and Sao Paulo, not New York City or London. Those were the major cities in the past. These are the largest cities in the world. 10 million people living in these cities. And you can see the changing urban and rural divide. It changed about, there was a crossover right about 2006, between 2005 and 2010. And look at this growth here of the numbers in the urban area and how much they're growing. So that by 2050, it, it, it population in mil, millions will be around 6,500 million. The world's biggest cities, as it's mentioned earlier, these are the ones that are growing. And this is a projectile that are projected uh, in Mumbai in India. And uh, you can see where they are here. New York, not so much. And then the rest are all in Africa and in uh, Asia. Now, this may be an issue that is going to be something you want to write about, is the fossil fuels and the difference between fossil fuels and renewable energy. So that's another important part of the book. And you can see right now, this is actually from 2016, coal supplies 29% and oil supplies 31% of our primary energy sources. So when we're trying to change to say biofuels or, na or natural gas or other, these are very small, although natural gas is growing compared to what it used to be. But add 29 and 31 and you get 60%. So 60% in this pie, gives you most of the energy supplies. This may be an idea for you for your paper, forests and oceans, how we manage them. Maine is a very, uh, is, is, an, is an important resource, that's an important resource in the state, both forests and oceans, so it may be something close to home, but it will also be something that will affect in the, the, global, uh, the globalization of the world as well. Um, and if you think about managing the, the forests and trees and jungles, 
You can think of the uh, problems with the deforestation in, on the Amazon River as a potential health and human crisis, especially in terms of global uh, warming. So this is a summary of the chapter, and you can read that on your own. But these are the major points that you should get from this chapter. So one final thing is going back to those resources, and I really urge you to look at the resources. One of them is this site here, and it's the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency. That may be an area that you are interested in. It just comes from this site here. And you can, you can look at the uh, different sources. So when you're looking for a topic, which you'll have to come up with a topic soon, think of where you're going to get your information. And all of these have great sources, and they give you good, good data. Here are the, uh, the, these are some of the uh, general resources, so you may be able to find some good data there. Um, let me just say, okay, Indiana, Indiana Journal of Global Legal. So there you go. You get some articles in here. I just randomly chose this one. And uh, you sh don't pay for anything. So if you have to subscribe, don't pay for anything because you can probably find a comparable journal article on uh, free sources as well. So that is basically the end of this video. Each week, we'll try to get over the f two chapters. And uh, we'll make sure that you get some ideas for your paper. Have a good, have a good week.